Suppose I get a positive test result, which I'm going to call T with a superscript plus, for antibodies to an infectious agent, say a respiratory infection. What is the probability that I really do have the antibodies given that I test positive? Well, before watching this video, it would be helpful if you watched my video on positive predictive value, because in that video, I derive this formula, which I am going to use today. This formula relies on the sensitivity of the test, the specificity of the test, and the prevalence of the infection in the population or subgroup from which the patient who got the positive test result belongs. Um, very quickly, the sensitivity is the probability that somebody with the disease will actually test positive for the disease. The specificity is the probability that somebody without the disease will actually test negative. And the prevalence is the probability that a randomly selected person from the general population or the subgroup from which the person was known to have come from actually has the disease. So the sensitivity and the specificity comes from testing the validity of the actual screening test. The prevalence comes from an honest surveillance attempt by, for example, the Center for Disease Control in the United States of America, who would try to do random sampling and determine the proportion of the population that actually has um, antibodies to this um, infection that, you know, would be uh, studied. So in this case, all I want to do is I want to say, look, suppose the sensitivity of the screening test is 80%, suppose the specificity is 95%, and suppose the underlying prevalence of the condition is 40%. How would we calculate the positive predictive value, given that we have this formula? So what we do is we write sensitivity as a decimal, which would be 0 0.80, but you don't need the 80 because you know, that doesn't add any information. And the prevalence is 40%, which is 0 0.4. And you divide this again by 0 0.8 times 0 0.4 plus. Now you need one minus the specificity. So one minus 0 0.95 is 0 0.05. and 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6. And I use asterisks instead of an X or a dot because I don't want to confuse anybody thinking that, you know, it might be a variable X or it might be a decimal point. So I will always use, use asterisks when it comes to multiplication. So how do you actually do this on the calculator. So what you would do is you would take the parenthesis key and you would type in 0 0.8 and then the times button and then 0 0.4 and then the parenthesis key, the close parenthesis key, and then the divided by button and then another parenthesis key and then 0 0.8 and then the times button times button, times button, and then 0 0.4, and then the plus button, 0 0.05, and then the times button, 0 0.6, and then the close parenthesis button, and then the equals button. So let's make sure we have it. 0 0.8 times 0 0.4, 0 0.8 times 0 0.4, divided by, in parenthesis, now we have the whole denominator in parenthesis, 0 0.8 times 0 0.4 plus 0 0.05 times 0.6. So let's put this in and let's actually see what we get. So I'm gonna use my little Casio FX300 
MS solar powered calculator, which has no batteries, which won't pollute any landfills. Just want to make sure you guys see it well. Looks like hopefully you'll be seeing this well. Oh, I can't put it over there because I can't see what I'm doing. All right, hopefully this, you'll see it well. All right, so let's put it in. So, so we have 0.8. Times 0.4, close parenthesis, divided by open parenthesis, 0.8 times 0.4 plus, and 1 minus the specificity is 0 0.05, and 1 minus the prevalence is 0.6. And then I close the parentheses. Let me make sure I got the same expression. So on this nice little calculator, I don't own any stock in the Casio company. I'm just saying it's a nice cheap calculator. I think it's like 10 or $11. So you have 0.8 times 0.4 in parentheses divided by 0.8 times 0.4 plus 0 0.05 times 0.6. And let's put that in and we hit the equals button and we get 0 0.9142. Let me write that down. So 0 0.914. Actually, if you round this off, I'll round this off. It's actually, it's actually 0.9142857, but nobody will want you to write it that way. If you move the decimal point two places to the right, which is equivalent to multiplying by 100, we have like 91.43%. So with this sensitivity and this specificity and this level of prevalence in the population from which the patient was part of, um, we have a positive predictive value of about 91%. So that means the probability that his test result is a true positive given that he tests positive, is over 90%. It's about 91%, which is actually pretty good. 